They've been growing organic grains in Denmark for quite some time. Farmers tend to learn best from other farmers. Millers, bakers, key players all along that bread meat food chain. This is definitely my favorite stop yet. In Dianalen, near Copenhagen, Karsten Velpland operates Bregenvegard, a small diversified farm focused on on-farm sales and agritourism. Here for nearly a week and you're now getting used to Danish coffee. Yes. <laughs> Our little spot here is only 30 hectares. We have then rented a, a little spot over there, and also a field on the other side of the road, and some uh, meadow uh, for grazing uh, out in Norwegian. We can now use it as a tourist uh, attraction. <laughs> because uh, we, we try to make the farm work as people have uh, seen on the movie, like it was in the 50s. Uh, and that is in itself a, a, a tourist attraction. It's a little cold up here. Let's go down to the garden. Karsten keeps bees and a few pigs to entertain his agritourism visitors. But most of his 60 hectares are in a five-year rotation of pasture and small grains. He also raises 40 steers. While in Denmark, grains are grown primarily to feed livestock. In Karsten's case, it's the other way around. Production. We do not want to use grain for feeding uh, steers. Grain are for feeding humans. That is my idea. Karsten emphasized how his beef production actually feeds his grain production. By keeping his steers on a grass clover pasture, he gains nitrogen both from the manure and the plowed in pasture. Like other growers who are farming for Aurion, he focuses on heritage varieties like the midsummer rye that we tasted elsewhere. It was very rainy weather last, last fall and we had planted, uh, we were planting the last week of November. Two weeks after, we had snow for three months. It's a variety from the northern part of Scandinavia. It can stand any weather. Some call it midsummer rye. Yeah. In Denmark, we call it Svedjerum. You can see here my midsummer rye and a normal rye. Very different. Very different, yeah. yeah. Uh, and uh, there was a competition last year, and uh, our midsummer rye won the gold medal in the category of uh, grain and bread. Wow. wow. Before we left, Karsten showed us where he dries and stores grain in the hundred-year-old barn. Down under here there are uh, some... Uh, some of the, the culvert to... The yeah, to, to where I can blow air uh, in, out from the outside. This is uh, this year's Öland sweet. And, um, Combined very very wet, more than uh, more than 20 percent of water. We couldn't do anything about it. We just had to take it inside and then try to control <laughs> the water content indoor. Uh, this this weather we've got today, we can have in, in harvest time too. August is the harvest month, and it's the most rainy month of the year in, in Denmark where we, when we want to harvest. It's a falling number, it's a real challenge uh, too, and we focus on it very well because farmers at harvest time focus on, on weather and water content and less on falling numbers, so we, we try to motivate them to harvest early. And you can't be an organic farmer in Denmark without a good grain storage. Near the German border, we visited Kurt Jessen, a former dairy farmer whose current focus is on grain production. He's one of the few farmers we visited who has little to no vertical integration. On 220 hectares, he grows wheat and ancient grains like emmer and einkorn for Aurin, and also sells to Skertoft and Mulle. For Danish farmers who are drying grains on a small scale, creating air channels under the grain with perforated pipe is the simplest method. However, in Denmark's wet climate, simple drying and storage methods don't always work well. Condensation can form in outdoor silos or when warm air is blown through stored grain. This can then lead to the development of ochratoxin, a fungal contaminant. These uh, stripes are actually for outside, they are outside. Mm -hmm. But because of uh, condensing, condensation. Yes. condensation, we wanted them inside. Typical Danish uh, storage is uh, uh, 
a flat storage with uh, the air from the bottom and, and the heat uh, too. And the more uh, efficient is like, like wood, is that one and that one. It goes a portion in it and then it goes to the storage and then another portion comes in. When, when Kurt started um, uh, uh, selling to Audion, uh, he, had a, he had a shed uh, uh, on, up front and uh, to, um, to keep up with uh, what Audion expected, uh, he built this shed. In Denmark, we saw that larger producers like Kurt and Niels Meinertsen avoid condensation by putting silos under cover and by pulling air through the grain from top to bottom to dry it. They emphasize that quality begins in the field, but that farmers need to protect that quality through proper cleaning, drying, and storage. At the northern tip of Denmark, we visited Jörn Using Larsen, the founder of Aurian Mill and Bakery. Jörn is recognized in Denmark as the pioneer of artisan milling and baking. His focus has been on simple breads and on rediscovering ancient grains ever since he started Aurian in 1974. We have started in a little shop in Jørgen, in the city here. And then I started to bake bread in my father's bakery, after my work as a confectioner. And we make a lot of funny things. <laughs> Marmalade and, yeah, muesli and so. Very primitive and make bake some bread and in 1980 we started here in our farm so and with the years we are now 25 uh, people working here we have a what is it? Omset, overrun, is it? turnover turnover yeah. of 25 million danish crowns we produce about 2,000 tons of organic and biodynamic grain. We are the only biodynamic grain mill in Denmark. 80 or 90 percent of what we mill is whole grain. And whole grain is coming in in Denmark very much at the moment. We are making here baking courses. They are filled up in when we uh, send it out, it's filled up in two weeks for the whole year. We made four baking houses and, and people today, they want to, to feel and hear and make some experience with their hands how to make a dough. Aurian is a consumer-owned business like a cooperative and is committed to social and environmental goals. For instance, its diverse retail line includes chocolates from fair trade cooperatives in Bolivia. Arian also strives to use alternative energy sources whenever possible, including wind, solar, wood, and grain hulls. One of Arian's signature breads is a pumpernickel, made with only flour, honey, and salt, no added yeast, which is allowed to rise for 40 hours and bakes for 24 hours in the wood-fired oven. But we have in here, they are very quick here. Now I'll finish the stand there till tomorrow. It's 7 o'clock in the morning, out of the oven. We made porridge here, we make flour here, we make baby food over there. And the barley machine that is like a museum. I, th I think it's, it's nearly nearly 100. You can see it. It's it is nearly 100 years old. It's still going. And in here we roast it. That is with oil. We don't could not use uh, the other energy here. This is definitely my favorite stop yet. His values about stone milling um, and milling in a slow, cool fashion to preserve the. Um, the nutrients in the grain is what we're going for in our mill as well. So we're, in this mill, we're seeing similar equipment to what we intend to use. Inside we have some natural stones from Austria. We dress them once a year. You 
all, all know what are falling numbers. Yes. 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 So that is very self. So I'm working on together with some farmers to make a little booklet on how to harvest weeds in the in the rain. <laughs> in the rain. <laughs> It is possible, but you must harvest with 25, 24, 26% of moisture. I have some of my farmers, they do that, no problem. But you must have the perfect grind system. Jörn works closely with farmers to get the types of grain he wants, like heritage varieties, and the quality that he needs. We learn from one of his farmers that he also strives to offer a stable price. What this means is that in some years it's not the highest price, but it's never the lowest. Jörn has also worked to educate consumers. He's authored two books and he speaks with great conviction about traditional cereals and the value of stone milling. They taste something that I never thought. They taste bread that they never saw it could taste. And if they have friends on on visit, they say, oh, what bread you have made. It's only the flour. <laughs> and it is said for many years ago, and people are still saying that, in Denmark you cannot grow good wheat in good quality. And I would say that is a history. For more information about the Northern New England Local Bread Week Project, visit us at extension.umaine.edu slash localwheat. Mm -hmm.